Hi there, my name is John Jordan. I'm the former IB Diploma Program Coordinator at Worthington Kilbourne, and I'm the current IB History teacher. Welcome to this video, which replaces our traditional face-to-face -face curriculum night presentation on the IB Diploma Program. This presentation is meant to provide a basic introduction to the program for students in grades eight and nine and their parents. If you are a grade 10 student or the parent of a 10th grade student, you may wish to switch over to the presentation by the current IB Diploma Program Coordinator, Jeannie Goodwin. So what is the IB Diploma Program at Worthington Kilbourne? Well, it's a two-year curriculum that is typically delivered in grades 11 and 12, and it offers challenging academic experiences across the academic disciplines. And we'll talk about the courses that we offer in a minute. But an important thing to answer right now is the question of whether a student can complete the full IB Diploma program and also take courses outside the program? The answer is yes. Um, some of the things that our IB Diploma program students do outside of the program include taking music courses, orchestra, band, vocal music, um, completing the Project Lead the Way sequence, and taking electives from non-IB uh, classes. Um, these are all possible. Uh, you can usually work out one or sometimes even two of these, despite the comprehensive nature of the program. Now, where we tend to run into problem scheduling is when we have a student who wants to do lots of other things outside the program. Then you just kind of run out of room in our period one through eight schedule. But we have had students who are our music students, who are project lead the way students, and students who just have ambitions to take other courses. And they've been able to complete the full IB diploma program and still fulfill their desire to take those courses. It's a program that's known for developing not just academic skills, but personal growth and inculcating a sense of international and global mindedness in students, as well as developing their capacity for leadership. And students who complete the IB diploma program are eligible, based upon their performance on IB exams, to be awarded a second diploma called the Diploma of the International Baccalaureate better known just as the IB Diploma. This does not replace their diploma issued by Worthington Kilbourne High School and the Worthington Schools in the state of Ohio. Uh, it is a second diploma, an additional diploma, a special diploma that is awarded to students who perform well on IB assessments. So what courses do we offer in the IB Diploma program at Kilbourne? We offer a single literature course, which you'll learn more about in a few minutes. We offer courses in all three of our world languages, French, Latin, and Spanish. We offer history and psychology. In the sciences, we offer biology as well as sports, exercise, and health science. We have one math class. And in electives, we offer business management and visual arts. And students who wish to take a second course from one of the other categories are welcome to do so as an elective. So why do students choose IB Diploma Program at WKHS? The main reason is because the IB Diploma Program offers the very best preparation for university level work. And over the course of this presentation, we'll try to show you how that's the case. But before we do, you may wish to pause the video and read some of these statements from universities about the IB Diploma Program. You can see that big state universities like the University of Wisconsin and the University of Virginia regard the IB Diploma Program as excellent preparation. But also small liberal arts colleges, some of the best in the country like Denison and Sarah Lawrence, also respect the preparation that the IB Diploma Program provides. All of these colleges and universities know that a student who comes in having completed the IB Diploma Program, whether they earn the IB Diploma or not, are fully prepared on day one to do the work that they need them to do. So how's that happen? Well, there's a variety of reasons. Number one, the rigor of the program. So having taught AP European history before I taught IB history, there's a fairly significant difference between the way you learn history in those two courses. In AP European history, it's a one-year course with a lot of material to cover and an assessment that is based on multiple choice questions and a few essays. As a result, the way that the course is taught tends to be more based on the capacity of a student to sort of absorb information and, and internalize it and, and perhaps do some analytical tasks and then, and then spit it back out. 
Um, that's how you generally have success on the AP exam. So for example, when we teach the French Revolution, we teach the causes of the revolution essentially through a lecture, one or two days, in which the teacher tells the student, look, here's what caused the French Revolution. In the IB history course, it's quite different. You know, I provide the students with four or five readings by different historians, each of whom has a different take on what caused the French Revolution. The students do each reading, and then, then the next day we have a seminar where they discuss what they learn from this particular historian. After all of the readings are seminar, then we have a synthesis seminar where the students now discuss with each other what they learned from all the different historians, and they come to their own conclusions about what caused the French Revolution. And then they'll write an essay on it. So when I talk about rigor, it's not so much that the students learn more information in an IB course, it's how they approach the information, what they do with the information, and how they learn from the information that adds to the rigor of the course and makes it more in alignment with the kind of learning that these students will want to do when they advance in their university career. When we talk about cohesion, it comes from the fact that the IB Diploma Program is a program. It's, it, it is not a series of individual courses that exist in complete independence from each other. It's a program in which the teachers look for opportunities to demonstrate for students the natural connections between the different academic disciplines. So again, to take an example from my history course, I teach the students about the experiences of soldiers during the First World War. But in the IB literature course, IB literature teachers will show our students how these soldiers wanted to de-romanticize the experience of war how these soldiers wanted to communicate to people back at home who were sort of in a kind of patriotic frenzy about the war, what the war was really all about. And so they have an entire section on World War I poetry. Another important component of the IB Diploma Program is writing, writing across the curriculum. So you write in every class, even in math class. In math class, there's a task called the mathematics investigation in which students choose a phenomenon from the real world that can be modeled mathematically. And having done so, they then write about it. They write about the phenomenon, they write about how they develop their mathematical model, and they write about what they learned from modeling this phenomenon mathematically. You all probably know that colleges and universities are very concerned about the quality of writing that they get from students coming out of high school. They want a student who is at least ready to write at a basic college level. Uh, they're not demanding advanced college writing or graduate level college writing, but they want students who can come in and know how to, to do a basic paper. And that's absolutely something that will happen for students who come out of the IB Diploma Program uh, due to the writing that they do in all their classes, as well as something called the extended essay, which we'll talk about later. Another excellent feature of the IB Diploma Program is the way that it honors the whole student, not just the part of the student who can perform well on a short, you know, short, a few hours exam, uh, examination. Um, and though they do this through what's called the inter internally assessed component. All IB exams have an internally assessed component. And how it works is the IB uh, system will provide teachers and students with a framework for a task. Teachers work individually with students to develop that task. Students perform and fulfill the task, and then the task is graded by the teacher using a, a rubric provided by IB. And teachers then report the grades to IB, and IB incorporates those grades into the final exam grade. Usually counts for around 20% of the final exam grade. The reason why IB does this is they recognize that there are some skills in certain academic disciplines, really in all academic disciplines, that cannot be measured in a two or four or even a six hour exam period. In history, that would include historical research, thinking and writing. In um, the sciences, it would, it would involve designing and conducting experiments. Same thing in psychology. And so IB honors the whole student by grading them, not just on what they can demonstrate in a short exam period, but on the skills that they can only demonstrate over time. 
There's also a component of IB called creativity activity service, which is built into the program in order to encourage students to develop a, a, a lifetime, a, a lifestyle perhaps of self-improvement in those areas, creativity, activity, and service. We'll talk more about that later as well. The IB Diploma Program also encourages students to develop an international or global worldview. An international worldview means that students appreciate the contributions of people from many nations, many cultures, to how we understand the world today. A global worldview means that students understand the way that what goes on somewhere else in the world is connected to their lives and how what they do in their lives is connected to and can affect people all around the world. In our IB literature course, our students read works of literature from Japan, Russia, Iran, Ghana, South Africa, um, Sweden, Britain, the United States. So this is a great example of how students are exposed to literary styles from around the world, can recognize how those styles support and help develop each other, and can appreciate how people from different cultures have contributed to world literature. One of the neatest things that develops in the IB to program in the IB diploma program is a sense of community among students and also between students and teachers. As an IB teacher, I'll tell you that the opportunity to teach a group of students for two years is a fantastic opportunity. And it means that we get to know the students extremely well. Uh, the students also form into a kind of a family. That's a word that students constantly use, IB students constantly use to describe the relationship that they have with their fellow IB students. They refer to it as a family and they treat each other uh, they treat each other like family members treat each other. And, and sometimes that means that they fight. And sometimes that means uh, that they cooperate with each other, but they always share each other's experiences. And that's a, a really rewarding component of the program, both for the students and for us as teachers. And then there's the IB core. So we need to talk about the IB core. The IB core are three requirements that a student must fulfill in order to earn the IB diploma program in addition to the six courses in the various academic disciplines. So one part of the IB core is another course called Theory of Knowledge. And Theory of Knowledge is what I would call a non-traditional philosophy course. And I say non-traditional because students don't study philosophers and their writings, they study questions. And maybe the most important and fundamental question that they study is, how do we know? How do we know something? When we say we know something, how do we, how do we get to that conclusion? How do we come to the conclusion that we know something is true, that we know something is real? What role does individual perspective play in deciding what we think we know? What role does language play in deciding what we think we know? How about values? How about the community of knowers that we belong to? How does that shape and influence what we think we know? So um, it's a question that explores ways of knowing and standards for truth. Um, and it really is neat because in all of the different academic disciplines, we talk about developing students' thinking skills, but we're always developing those thinking skills within the context of a particular academic discipline. So historical thinking skills, literary thinking skills, scientific mathematical thinking skills. This is a course where students bring those together and they simply study how do people think. Pretty neat course. Um, there is uh, another component of the IB Diploma Program core, which is called Creativity, Activity, and Service. I mentioned it before. In creativity, activity, and service, students are encouraged to develop a lifestyle of self-improvement in those three areas. Creativity, making new things. What could that consist of? It could consist of artistic creativity, traditional artistic creativity, uh, drawing, sculpting, painting, uh, making jewelry, making clothing. It could in it involve the performing arts, uh, music, dance. Um, and it could even involve something like cooking. Anything that includes creativity is something that can be included in 
creativity, activity, service. Activity refers to physical activity. Um, and then service refers to sharing your gifts with the community. And the way that it works is students are encouraged to, to pick out something that they want to improve about themselves and create a plan for doing so. Then as they execute that plan, they reflect on it weekly in a journal. They write about what they plan to do, they write about how it went, and they write about what they plan to do next. And students are encouraged to really, um, really personalize this experience around things that are important to them. So an example, we might have a, a volleyball player and that volleyball player really wants to improve her serve. So she develops a plan for improving her serve. She implements that plan with her coach during practice. And then she reflects on it every week and, and adjusts the plan as needed and, and reports on her progress. And the culminating activity of, creat of creativity activity service is a, a major project, uh, which we call the WOLF project, in which students conceive of a project that involves creativity, activity, or service. They then recruit others to help them, and they lead others in the fulfillment of that project. And if you want, you can pause the video here, and you can take a look a, at uh, some of the examples of WOLF projects that our students have fulfilled over the years that we've been offering the IB Diploma Program. The third component of the IB Core is the extended essay. And the extended essay is a work of independent research and writing that is done with the support of an extended essay subject advisor. A student can write an extended essay on really any subject for which there is a qualified advisor in the school. And so this is an opportunity for a student to identify a topic or a question that the student has been fascinated by for a long time, something for which the student can have real passion, and to spend time with the support of an experienced teacher um, in doing independent research, independent writing. And it culminates in what's called the Viva Voce interview. It's kind of like a, a defense of a dissertation or a defense of a thesis. Although the word defense is way too, too dramatic, it's more of a celebration in which a panel of students and teachers asks questions to the author of the extended essay and gives the author an opportunity to play the role of the expert in the room and, and demonstrate how much has been learned about the topic, how much has been learned about the question as a result of the extended essay process. The extended essay also proves to students that they are ready to do university level writing before they even step into a university. So it gives them enormous confidence and a sort of framework for understanding how to do university level writing when they proceed to the university. There's also one, oh, I'm sorry. Here are a series of topics, uh, research questions that some of our students have investigated as part of their extended essays. Feel free to pause the video and check them out. I'd like to add one WKHS exclusive, as far as we know it. The way that the IB Diploma Program at Worthington Kilbourne is structured, the Theory of Knowledge course meets during some semesters every other day. On the alternating days, IB students are grouped together for what's called IB advisory. Our building administration tries their best to provide all IB teachers with a prep period during the same period. And as a result, our IB diploma program students can have access to their IB teachers during this period of the day to receive individualized assistance and individualized instruction when needed. We recognize that, that students who try to complete the full IB diploma program are tackling a really, really difficult challenge. And we consider this one way that we can support them in trying to rise to that challenge. We're not always able to get all IB diploma program teachers scheduled during the IB advisory period, but we do our best. Now, for students who are excited about the prospect of the IB diploma program, but don't think that they can fit the full IB diploma program into their schedule, we have options. We have what's called the IB partial program in which a student takes two or more IB courses. They take theory of knowledge along with IB advisory and they complete either creativity activity service or the extended essay. 
This gives students the experience of being part of the IB community with the IB approach to learning, but it doesn't gobble up as much of the schedule. It makes it more manageable for students. Worthington Hill Board students can also take IB courses a la carte. That is to say, they can take a, an IB course simply as a standalone course if they see one or two that, that are, seem exciting to them. So there are really all kinds of options available for students to be participants in the IB Diploma Program at WKHS, either as full IB Diploma Program students, IB Partial Program students, or simply by taking IB courses a la carte. Keep in mind that only being a full Diploma Program student qualifies a, a student to potentially earn the IB Diploma. Being a Partial Program student does not taking IB courses a la carte does not. So back to the question of why people do it. It's a lot, let's not fool ourselves. The IB diploma program is difficult and it is uh, time consuming uh, and it is a challenge. So why do people do it? Well, I mentioned before superior preparation for university level work. And the fact is that that has proven to be the case, whether you're talking about large state universities, or prestigious private uh, universities or liberal arts colleges. And we're talking about some of the very finest in the United States. They have a very clear view of what the IB Diploma Program is and what it does for students. And they know that IB Diploma Program students will come into their universities ready to go on day one. And so again, if you wish, you can pause and, and see some of these additional statements that some colleges and universities have made about their view of the IB Diploma Program. But maybe the best way to measure and understand the way that IB Diploma Program is valued by colleges and universities is in admissions. And being an IB Diploma Program student has definitely been shown to provide an advantage in college admissions. Uh, this is a study um, which looked at some of the more prestigious colleges and universities in the United States, and it examined the acceptance rate for IB Diploma Program students versus the overall acceptance rate. And you can see that in general, students who are IB Diploma Program students have a better chance of admission than students who are not IB Diploma Program students. Now, keep in mind that, that colleges and universities accept students on the basis of their participation in the IB Diploma program, not on whether they have earned the IB Diploma. Students don't learn whether they earn the IB Diploma until July after they've graduated from high school. By that time, they've, they've achieved their college admissions. So the admissions offices are admitting students on the basis of their fulfillment of the requirements of the program not on whether they earn the diploma. And again, this advantage is because of the level of preparation that they understand students receive by completing the IB diploma program. So you might take an, an example of Duke University. So 28% of IB diploma program students uh, are admitted to Duke University. The overall acceptance rate at Duke is 16%. So you see that there is, in that case, a fairly significant advantage in admissions for a college like Duke, keeping in mind that students who apply to Duke are not slouches. Now, students who apply to Duke are students with high SAT scores, uh, they're in student government, they've got high GPAs, they're captains of their sports teams, and yet only 16% of them are admitted, but 28% of IB Diploma Program students are admitted. And I think that the important thing about, um, about this, though, is to keep in mind that the best reason to, to participate in the full IB Diploma Program is not necessarily to gain admission to the college of your choice, but to be fully qualified to do the work at whatever college you're qualified to attend and be fully ready to do the work. It's really much more about the preparation, but let's admit it, the, the preparation and the university's knowledge of the quality of the preparation does lead to an advantage in admissions. Some colleges and universities also offer um, credit for IB Diploma Program students, uh, much in the same way that they offer credit for AP courses. Um, so you have to kind of look, if you wanna know how much an IB course or how much you'll be credited for fulfilling the IB Diploma Program student in the form of college credit, you really have to look at each college and university's website and, and they can tell you how much credit you'll get for your IB Diploma Program coursework. 
Some colleges and universities also offer scholarships for IB Diploma Program students, special scholarships. The University of Nebraska has a very generous scholarship for students who have fulfilled the, the requirements of the IB Diploma Program. It used to be $50,000 scholarship. It's not something to sneeze at. Most colleges and universities don't offer a scholarship quite that generous, but I think every little bit helps. But again, that's, uh, that's something that you have to look at, look at on a case-by-case -case basis. You have to do your research. You have to think about what colleges and universities you're interested in and see if they offer an IB scholarship. So I hope you've learned a lot about the IB Diploma Program. That's kind of a, a whirlwind tour, I will admit. Um, but here's the thing, if you have questions, and I'm sure many of you do, please do not hesitate to email me. My email address is jjordan at wscloud.org. If you prefer to email the current IB Diploma Program Coordinator, Jeannie Goodwin, her email address is jgoodwin at wscloud.org. We'll be happy to answer all your questions as best we can. So thank you very much for viewing our video presentation on the IB Diploma Program. I wish you all the very best as you proceed forward in your high school careers, and I hope that I'll get to see you in class sometime. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.